Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Mortgage Matters in Minutes with me, Brent Rasmussen, your host and mortgage specialist uh, this week. And uh, the title this afternoon, which we've been getting and speaking to a lot of our clients this week, is what is my real credit score? Uh, that seems like it would be so simple these days because many of our clients have access to their free credit scores, whether that's on Credit Karma, whether that's on your Discover card statement, whether it's on your American Express statement, all of those places now are giving out what your credit score will be. And where the discrepancy occurs is many times when we as mortgage lenders obtain an individual's credit score, the scores don't match. And our clients ask, what's going on? Why is yours so much different? And usually they get you know, fairly upset saying the score that we've obtained maybe is quite a bit less than the score that they see on their statements. And we have an answer for that. And every great lender uh, that we know of knows the answer to this because we spend a lot of time in course courses and continuing education talking about it. But the reason there are different credit scores and people are not aware of that is that they do know that there's three important companies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. But what people don't know is each one of those companies have over 30 different scoring models that calculate your credit score. So while people are looking for an exact score, like if you took a test and you received a 95 or you received an 87, they're looking for those credit scores to be exact for every single um, company, institution, or type of loan or uh, credit account that you get. And what we can tell our consumers, because we speak with them regularly every day about this, is that if you go get a credit card or a student loan or a car loan, those credit scoring models are different than what we use for mortgage lending. And so because of that, for example, Credit Karma uses a scoring model called the Vantage Score 3.0, and it now nicely says this right on the homepage, right below your credit score, it'll say, here's the scoring model that we used. When it comes to mortgages through Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, we use three different credit scoring models that are different. We use the Equifax Beacon 5.0, uh, Experian Fair Isaac version 2, and TransUnion's FICO Risk Score Classic 04. And those words sound very weird and interesting to many different people because they are. Those are all the different scoring models that we are able to use. And because of those scoring models being different, that uh, is why we see clients have different credit scores. So again, that's the major discrepancy. And I can tell you many times we've seen people be as far off as 100 points different. Uh, generally though, I think if we do an average, we're anywhere from 10 to 30 points off is kind of what we see that can be different, either good or bad in regards to that. Um, the, the last thing we'll share is that there are uh, there, is, there is a formula that all these scoring models follow. It's the same formula, but each scoring model does things a little bit differently. So for example, if you are following Credit Karma, that is a free credit score. So again, with a free credit score, what we see is that that score is generally more lenient, which usually means you have a higher credit score. Where of course, if you're looking to borrow a, uh, money for buying a house or refinancing your mortgage, they're gonna use this credit scoring models that are a little bit more strict, I would say, just to make sure they have a true accurate picture of what your score really is. And there's five things that make up what your, how your credit score is actually calculated. So 35% of your score is based upon payment history. Uh, basically, if you've had any lates, uh, if you have any collections, if you've been uh, late on your accounts 30, 60, 90, 120 days late, uh, the better you pay your accounts, the higher your score is gonna be. That's 35% of your score. 30% of your credit score is based on credit utilization. And what is credit utilization? That means how much balance you have in relationship to the credit limit. So let's say you have a credit limit of $1,000 and you have a balance of $400. Well, that would be a 40% credit utilization. You wanna keep that credit utilization below 30% or below 10% to get the best credit score out there. Ultimately, if you can keep it at zero, that's wonderful as well too. The last three items that make up of your credit score is the 15% is length of credit. So the older you are and the older you've had credit, the more information the credit bureaus have on you to see if you've paid your bills on time accurately or not. 
And so that's 15% of your score is the length of credit history. So that leaves us with 20%. If we do a pie chart, all this adds to 100%. And the last two 10% are uh, credit inquiries and the type of credit both make up 10% of your credit score. So uh, the credit inquiries aren't as impactful as people sometimes make them to sound. They've you know, heard stories that somebody pulls their credit and their score is going to drop 100 points or 50 points. Well, totally you can only make up up to 10% of your score. So if you have the highest score, you know, in theory, I guess it could drop 80 points, but that's very, very, very unlikely. Uh, or see those scores very literally dropped if you have a high credit score. If possibly you've uh, shopped around for some loans and unable to obtain financing, uh, then obviously a, a credit inquiry is going to look like you were denied for financing and you're just continuing opening or trying to open up credit. 10% uh, of the score, the last 10% is like I mentioned, the type of credit, which means you want to have a good balance on your credit report of car loans, student loans, credit cards, mortgages. You don't want all mortgages. You don't want all credit cards. You want a good balance of one to two accounts of each type. And a lot of people say, do I need two mortgages? No. Uh, but if you have a car loan, a mortgage, you know, two or three or four credit cards, that's a good balanced credit report where you don't only go to one store to take out credit. You might have a Discover card, a Visa, a MasterCard. You have a good balance of types of credit in use to be able to give you your best score. So again today in summary, basically what we're talking about again is what is your real credit score? That many times is very, very challenging because we are getting these days access to your free credit score, which again, that scoring model isn't the same scoring model that lenders are going to use to obtain a car loan, a mortgage, your student loans, and credit cards. While that is an actual credit score, and it is an actual credit scoring model to get us a number, it's just not the exact one that we're going to use for mortgage lending. The reason why we think this is so important is I'm sure I have this conversation at least two to four times a day, nearly every single day of my career here in the last 10 years since free scores have been coming out, and it's frustrating to consumers. So again, here at Mortgage Specialists, you know, we believe in education and getting people the right answers, uh, whether that uh, benefits us financially or not, uh, our goal here is to always uh, steer you with the right education, the right information so you can make the best decision for you. So again, another week here of Mortgage Matters in Minutes. We appreciate you checking in. I know I went a little long today, but hopefully we'll see you all very soon. Have a great week. Uh, check us out on our website at mtg-specialist.com, or you can also give us a call anytime at 402-991-5153. Thanks all. Have a great day. Mortgage Specialists. Driven. Trusted. Reliable.